What's up, everybody? How are you doing? I'm so, so, so excited today, y'all. I have my sister, somebody who the other year, last year, I didn't even know. And now our relationship is on another level. In addition to being my sister, she is the burnout disruptor. Oh, yeah, she she's disrupting the cycles of burnout. No longer are we going to wait until we land on the ground trying to figure out how to pick ourselves up. We're not even going to get there. Um, my guest today is going to blow your mind away and I cannot wait for y'all to meet her. So stay tuned because we're about to talk about boundaries before burnout. Y'all, this is looking for my fit. You may not have everything you like, but I'm here to bring your light. Take a seat. On the ride, elephant method goes down the night. We'll bring the party right to you. If you wanna laugh, hear good news. Bring your friends, family too. Looking for my fit is what I do. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah. Looking for my fit, looking for my fit, yeah. And we're back, so listen. I'm live in the Looking For My Fit community, but before I even give a shout out to my people, I want to say if this is your first episode turning in, welcome. I know something led you to press play, and after you hear this episode, you're going to know exactly why. And to those of you who have been watching and listening for a long time, I just want to say welcome back. I'm so happy to see you. And also to the Looking For My Fit community, y'all, welcome to the live recording of the Looking For My Fit podcast, y'all. I got my sister here today. So before I even get into talking about her, I just want to go ahead and let her come off mute, come off and let the people know who you are. Y'all, welcome to the podcast. The, uh, what are we going to call this? The disruptor of the burnout. My sis, Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson. <laughs> Listen, I am too excited. All I have to say is y'all need to hold on to your hats because we are coming for that burnout tonight, sis. Let's go get it. Okay. It. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. So let me give y'all a little background. Um, you all have heard me talk on multiple episodes about uh, the program purpose of platform with Patrice Washington, who is the Patrice Washington. And y'all, I really, truly cannot. Hey, sis, look, got people checking in. I really and truly cannot even picture my life without the women that I met in purpose of platform. I'm like, what, what was I doing before I met y'all? No, for real. What were we doing? Playing around. We didn't know. We had no idea what was in us. We had no idea. And for all of that has to be one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever been a part of ever, ever, ever to have over 100 women come together for three months with zero drama, nothing but. Well, let me back up because women have that bad rep for for not for being, you know, catty with each other. That's just something people have put out there because they know when women come together, we are powerful beyond belief. And this program was proof of that. So for these women to come together who did not know each other, who then ended up surrounding each other, loving each other and genuinely cheering for each other, your win is my win. My win is your win. We are winning. And to be able to still continue that now that it's over, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. We we didn't know what we were walking into. We didn't know what we were about to experience. But I know that it's not just for now. This thing is going on. We are actually impacting the entire world. We have sisters all over the world and we're all moving together. So I'm telling you, power is coming. Oh, the power is coming. The power is coming. And you're right. We're in, we're making impact across the world. And that is legit. Um, so that's how I met um, PBJ. Um, and that's what she, you know, she's called on Instagram, Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson. She has a Jackson. She has her spoon full of PBJ. I mean, what a great name though, sis. <laughs> I mean, what a great name. I love it. I love it. You know, I started just signing emails, PBJ, and people loved it. I was like, if it bring you joy, it's good with me. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, let me get my spoon full of PBJ today. So look, I'm going to look. I want to look here because I want to make sure I get it right. So listen, Patrice, you are, before I even get into like your title, you're anointed, like just straight up. When you speak, there is just like the command of the room. 
literally when you start to speak if anybody's doing anything they're gonna stop and they're gonna listen you just have that that that's part of your gift is commanding the room and getting people to look at you and i love that you're shaking your head yes because we have to stand firm in those gifts Mm -hmm. and that is part of your gift um but if anybody were to uh, visit your website i love what it says disrupting cycles of burnout for people who serve from the heart you disrupt the cycles of burnout so what i would love for you to do is just tell a little bit about yourself but also how did you even come into doing this work where you are helping people to disrupt those cycles of burnout absolutely well first of all meek thank you so much i know we're sisters and we love each other but i don't take it for granted because i know you're serious about who you introduce your community to um so thank you so much for having me I got to tell you, so I've been working in higher education for 22 years, partnering with my husband in ministry and doing all of the things. All I had this plan, this professional plan, and God was faithful. Every goal I went after, I got, and it almost took me out. Mm. I will never forget that day in August 2019, I remember driving to work in the rain, pulled into my parking spot with my name on it, walked into the building, greeting people, hugging, good morning, just like I normally do. My students, hey, Dr. J, hey, Dr. PBJ. It was all I could do to get into that office and close that door. Mm. Me, I remember holding on to the edge of that wooden desk because I didn't feel like I could hold even my own weight up anymore. What I wanted to do was crawl under that desk in the fetal position and cry. Mm. The only reason why I didn't do that is because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to bring myself out of there and somebody would find me there. Listen, I needed to get out. I was empty. I didn't have any thing to give. I had taught everybody that I could be all things to all people and they believed me. Mm. They believed me. I knew if I opened that door, there would be a student with a question or there would be a staff member who needed support or a colleague who wanted to have a conversation. And I had nothing. I was burnt out. I was suffering from compassion fatigue. I was exhausted. I could not think straight. I was done. And that day, I walked away from my six-figure job. Wow. That corner office, that parking spot with my name on it, everything that everybody told you you're supposed to go after, everything that had I had worked for for 20 years, I literally had to choose to hold on to that or to hold on to me. And for the first time in my life, I chose me. Yes, sis. Chose me. Listen, you know how many people will be listening to this and will see themselves not like that was them, but that is them. Yes. Right here, right now, getting up in the morning and driving to a job and fighting back the tears to see the road because they know that this place that they're going to is no longer serving them or this is no longer where their gift or their talents are supposed to be used, but they're staying there anyway. So let's back up where you talk about compassion fatigue. Let's touch on that real quick before we even come back. Cause you listen, we, I don't know where this is going to go. You said a whole lot and I'm going to touch on all of it. What is compassion fatigue? Absolutely. So I want you to think about, ministers who are leaving the ministry or even contemplating suicide and dealing with depression. I want you to think about counselors who are in critical need of a counselor or social workers or teachers who are walking away from the profession, not because they're not called to it, but because they have carried the trauma of other people for so long that they are now living in the consequences of that trauma, just like it's their own. So they have picked up baggage along the way, along the years, just picking up baggage, all with good intent, just to serve, just to take care of people, just to do good. But we don't realize that every time you pick up somebody else's bag, it costs you something. 
So in compassion fatigue, what happens is your heart has carried so much of other people's stuff that you are literally emotionally and spiritually exhausted. Oh my gosh. I know we have some teachers in here and I, you know, that was, I stepped away from education as a teacher. I can absolutely speak to the compassion fatigue taking in everything for everybody the administrators need this the parents need that the children want this and you are literally taking it all in and especially if you are you know and there and you're in education so you know there are some educators who and this is not a, a diss because again I was there my husband's still there who aren't there for the right reason, but you can find that in all the places. But when you are that compassionate teacher, when you are there to serve for the right reasons, if you don't protect your peace and create boundaries, Come on. that compassion fatigue will take you out. When you are listening to students and you're listening to the home life that they're coming from, or if you're talking to a parent who's just trying to make it day to day, and just getting their child to school is is really and truly their 100% best that they can do for that child that day. You have that compassion and then you take that on because now you feel like you need to give just a little bit more. And the next thing you know, you have completely given out. You've given out. That's how you said people are leaving the profession. I cannot tell you the number of teachers who have reached out to me, who I used to you know, know, who were like, how did you do it? What made you take the step? And then, and it's a weird situation because I'm like, I, you know, stepped away because I knew it was my next thing, but you also need good teachers, right? So it's like you're in that weird space of like, you want to tell them, yes, like protect your peace, but then you also know it's a lot to take on. So, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, you're absolutely right. It's a lot to take on, but what we're not taught is we're not taught how to serve, but also be protected because we can disrupt cycles of burnout and still live the life that you're called to live and that you deserve to live. You don't have to spend your welfare, your well-being in order to take care of other people, but nobody has taught us how to do that. And the ones who care, I call them the heart workers. We are the people who do it for the heart, not for the pay, not for the title. You can keep all of that. I would do it for free. I'm doing it from my heart. Those people, it cost us so much mm. because we've never learned how to serve, but protect ourselves at the same time. What you said a whole mouthful. You just said a whole mouthful because we get taught to give, 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 give and give some more, especially as women. You know, like women for so long, like now we're in there's a movement occurring. There is a major movement occurring where women are coming underneath that cloth of having to be everything for everybody. We're, we're coming from underneath it. But old, you know, habits die hard. And so when you have been taught that all the time, like the portrayal do you remember the old uh rice crispy commercials where the mom would come out and but she will she they when they first started making rice krispies like the packaged ones and she would put them out and she would put the flour on her face sprinkle a little something and then she'd come out like oh because that was what was seen for a lot of women like you are the stronghold for everybody like that your job was to sacrifice and so when all you ever see is for women is for them to be the ones who do the sacrificing. Well, then you feel like that's what you're supposed to do. You feel like if you don't do that, then you're not adequate. Then you're not fulfilling your role. Like that, that's not that you're not being a, a woman. The number of people who have, you know, talked trash about the fact that I don't cook is insane. I don't cook. That's my boundary. I don't do it. Guess what? My husband cooks, praise the Lord. But my great grandmother, who I really feel was before her time, before I got married, she told me sitting in a parking lot of a farmer's food grocery store while we waiting on my grandma. She said, I know you get married. I know you love him. But let me give you a piece of uh, advice. She said, start out the way you can hold out. She mm -hmm. said, if you don't want to be coming home and cooking dinner every day. Don't start coming home and cooking every day. If And she gave me a whole list of things. If you don't have any intentions, if you don't want to have to do certain things, don't do it. 
She says, start out the way you can hold out. And that stuck with me in within my marriage. You know, so I was like, well, listen, Lotes, hope you didn't marry me for my cooking because <laughs> I'm not doing it. You know, and I'm appreciative of the fact that he does do it, but I just set that hard boundary and I didn't let go of it. And that's no knock to people who love cooking. Some people, it brings them joy. It does not bring me joy. It's not my ministry. But I, you know, a lot of people will say, well, that's the way to the man's heart, you know, to make you feel inadequate like you're supposed to. I can't tell you the number of people who we've gone to a function who looked at me weird because I didn't fix his plate. And Again, if that's what you want to do and that's how you choose to serve your spouse, that is fine. I'm not downplaying that. But for there to be the expectation of like this serving, I was like, I, I think I just had my great grandmother and my grandmother's spirit. I cannot conform to that. <laughs> I cannot do it. And so in that spirit, what can people do, um, sis, to create those boundaries so that we don't even have to get that because right now we're living in a time where people react to the burnout. Now I've had enough. Now I'm worn down, burnt out. I'm looking for something to do before I pull my hair out. Yeah. It doesn't have to be reactive. What can we do to be proactive? The first thing I want to say is we've got to be aware of it. So Overwhelm is the warning. Burnout is the demand. You will bow to burnout. Woo! You will bow. You will stop. You will stop. So we can choose to stop. We can pay attention to the warning. So what is your tell? T-E-L-L. -L. What is your tell? What is your symptom? How do you know that you're getting overwhelmed? Um, for me, I, listen, I got to tell you, me, in this season of life, where I was, I would come home from work, do all the things, whatever I needed to do. The moment I sat down, the moment, whether it was on the bed, on the couch, whatever, the moment I sat down, I was asleep, gone. Mm. No transition, no, con I, it could be mid sentence. If I sat down, I was asleep. I was so exhausted that the moment I let my bus, my muscles rest, my body gave out. Mm. I ignored that sign. I had a child who felt like she needed to make an appointment to spend time with me. Oh, I was serving other people's children more than I was serving my own. I didn't pay attention to that sign, Meek. I had high blood pressure and headaches. I couldn't rest at night because I was constantly thinking. Even if I slept, I wouldn't rest because I was constantly thinking about the things that I had to get done. I didn't pay attention to my tail. Woo! So what is your tail? What is your symptom? What is happening in your body, in your mind, in your emotions? Cloudy thinking, walking into a room and like, why did I walk in here? Mm. Now, I know I came in here for something. That's a cloudy mind. That is not normal. And we have normalized exhaustion. We normalized exhaustion because somewhere, like Meek said, we've been taught that this is what a woman is and Woo. this is what a woman does. We have come to dismantle that. You are who God says you are and you do what he created you to do. So we've got to, in order to build a boundary, you can't build a boundary until you know what your values are. So I always say, start with you. We pay so much attention to our to-do list and other people that our lives are run by a to-do list and other people. We've got to pull back and start with you. Start with you, your values, your motivation, your energy, your purpose, your priorities, and your sacrifice. If you can pull in and start with you, then you can build out from there. So if we go to boundaries, you got to start with your values. What are you unwilling to lose? <laughs> Because burnout is a thief. It will come for everything that means the most to you. And you've got to identify what means the most to you before you can protect anything. What means the most to you? What are you not willing to lose? I know I'm not willing to lose my relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not willing to lose my family. I am not willing to lose my health. There were years of my life. 
that I sacrificed my health. I am no longer willing to pay that price. That price is too high. What are your values? What are you not willing to sacrifice any longer? Because think about it this way. When you would visit, Meek, if you visited an ancient city, like a city from the Bible, right? Yeah. You didn't just roll up in the city with your bags like, hey, what's up? I came to see my cousin. It didn't work <laughs> that way because those cities had walls around them and those walls were several feet high and there was always a watchman on the wall and you weren't getting in the city until the watchman let you in. That's what your boundary is. You take those values, what means most to you, and you build a boundary on those values, based on those values, and you don't let everybody in. You become a gated community. And you decide what's allowed in and what's not allowed. That is what your boundary is. It's based on your values and what means most to you. Oh, my gosh. PBJ, that was a whole, I was about to say, bring it in. You, that right there, the walls are up. I decide what comes in. I get to decide what I allow around me. That is it. And again, going back to what you said, we have glorified exhaustion. We have glorified the, the rap race. That's what we've done. You know what I mean? Like if you ain't, if you ain't grinding, you know, I, while you grinding or while you sleeping, I'm grinding. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to be rested when I get up and I'm going to run laps around you. I, we've got to stop buying into that. That that's, a, that's the thing that people try to wear as a badge of honor that they, that, that, that they don't need. I don't need a, the number of people I've heard. I don't need eight hours of sleep. I don't need seven hours. Of sleep. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Who has fed you this lie? Now, I know some people, now seeing somebody, I can't see the names like if you didn't let StreamYard access it. Somebody said, easier said than done for me, but we definitely communicate when I get overwhelmed. And listen, that's a start. Mm -hmm. That is a start, being able to communicate yes. when you feel that overwhelm coming. So whoever that is, that is very um, telling right there. And also, let's pull this in right here. It says, a powerful word from Dr. PBJ, perfect timing right before another school year. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, you have to create those boundaries. Um like you said, to you get to make the decision, but also recognizing the tales mm -hmm. because you hit it on the head. When you came home and you're exhausted, you sit down and you fall asleep immediately. That's a sign. When you and your spouse are two ships passing in the night and you're barely seeing each other or having anything to say to each other, then that's a sign. You know, what I realized was a sign for me is that my son um, who is the most rambunctious and probably the most social, start checking for my schedule so much. Do, do you have to go to work in the morning? Are you going to be here when I get up in the morning? And when I started to notice that this wasn't something that was happening every now and then, it was happening every day, then that was my sign that I've, I've got to start shifting some things and start creating some other boundaries. And so I was sharing with you earlier, and some people are listening to know, so I broke my toe Monday. Um, and but it's been a silver lining in because it's given me some opportunity to like really reflect on a lot of things. But me breaking my toe has been like one of the best things for him because he was like, well, she can't go nowhere. You know what I mean? And I and so I have to reflect on what I had done before and being gone so much that that has an effect on him. And, you know, a lot of the things that we experience as adults all a lot of times lead back to childhood. Something that's happened in childhood. So I don't want him to have like that feeling of abandonment, wondering is mom going to be here? Is mom not going to be here? That's a tale. You know, there, there has to be some restructuring going on because I'm not willing to sacrifice that. Like you said, what are you willing to sacrifice? I'm not willing to sacrifice my family for that. I'm not willing to sacrifice my health, but I've been there, PBJ. I have been there. Yeah. Burnt out, operating in a, listen, I, for years, I was operating in a fog of exhaustion. And I mean that from every sense of the word. I'm talking about the world didn't even look clear. I'm not metaphorically speaking. I'm physically speaking, like feeling like I was in a daze and laying down and feeling like as soon as I laid down, it was time to get back up. Mm -hmm. Seeing my husband, but not seeing my husband, you know, only exchanging what is going on and who has to do what. That's a tell. That's a sign. 
Yeah. So well, let me ask you this, though, because I want to piggyback on somebody says some, somebody says easier said than done. And I'm not going to mince it and act like setting boundaries are always easy. Like, hey, I'm this boundary. This is it. What do we do to set the boundary and then stay strong in the boundary? Because, you know, sometimes you get pumped up. You're like, yes. So, look, I'm setting this boundary. And then the minute somebody comes and says something, you feel like that little guilt you know, you feel bad. You feel that you're being selfish, that you've set this boundary because somebody needs you and you feel like, I know I had this boundary, but also I want to be able to do something for this person too. How do we set that boundary for ourselves and how do we become efficient watchmen of our cities? Absolutely. The, the key for me was I had to identify my why. So my boundaries were not strengthened until I understood why I struggled with boundaries. Ooh. So when I talk about motivation, you've got to understand your why. I always tell people, everybody has an invisible backpack. Everybody. You have one. I have one. Everybody listening has one. We put it on every day. We might not realize it, but we put it on every day. And in that backpack is every experience you've had, is everything you've learned, is everything you've been taught, every word you've heard. It's all in that backpack. And what we need to do is open up that backpack and go through it and decide this experience has served me well. It's being productive for me. I'm going to keep it. But this experience causes me to overwork this experience causes me to overperform. Mm. This experience causes me to look for validation. Whatever your thing is, it's in your backpack. So through therapy, honey, I walked students to counseling for 20 years before I went for myself. Oh, wow. And I'm not saying you, you determine what works for you, but yes. I'm here to testify. Having that therapist became my time. Because when you're a heart worker, you are prone to spending all your time for other people. Ooh. And I made all the excuses all the years. I don't have money to pay for that. Da, 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 whatever. Health insurance. I haven't paid a dime. Oh, wow. So I'm just going to put that out there. Through therapy, I learned what was in my backpack and what was motivating me to people, please. I always mm. say, be, care be careful of the why traps, why traps of people pleasing, why traps of comparison, why traps of, of needing validation, and why traps of chasing physical things. Be careful of the why traps. What is in your backpack that causes you to feel like you don't, you can't say no? And that you don't have the right or the authority to say no. What experience do you have? What roles have you played that have fashioned you and trained you that you got to be all things to all people? Once you put your finger on that thing, once you understand what brought you to this point, then as you build your boundaries with that understanding, you'll recognize when that thing rises up again i'm not saying it disappears overnight that's not true or fair you got to continue working on it you got to continue practicing yes. Yes. but awareness is a powerful thing oh my it's God. one thing to carry it and you don't know it's there but when you know it's there you can see it rising and you can deal with it before it overwhelms you oh pbj you do not even understand okay so by the time this episode publishes, the episode before this would have been put out. I just, before I talked to you, recorded the episode that's going to go out tomorrow. And the title of it is, No is a Complete Sentence. I just recorded that episode, PBJ. No is a Complete Sentence. Literally talked and said, I think a lot of us think that our worthiness of being considered a good person is tied to saying yes to everything for everybody. And it is not. It's not tied to that. Girl, I'm serious. I'm about to take this hat off. My mind is blown. I need to let it just, whoo. I just said that. Let Go me ahead. speak to somebody, me. Let me, let me talk to somebody. Your value 
is not in your in your yes all the time. Your value is not in your overworking. Your value is not in the hours that you put in. Your value is not in the sacrifice that you continue to give. We frustrate ourselves. We get ain't nobody working like me. Nobody takes the extra assignments. Nobody cleans this house. Nobody else does anything because you don't make room. You don't make room for other people to show up. You don't make room. Let it fall. Somebody say, let it fall. Let Every it now fall. and then you got to let it fall because you make it look good. We get frustrated with the people around us. Like you can't see me struggling. They don't because you make it look good. Take your mask off and let it it fall. Your value is in your purpose. There is something that you were created to do that nobody does like you. You have a magic on the inside of you. And when people promote you, when they compliment you, when they call you out, it's not because you're grinding. It's not because you put everybody on your back and carry them. It's not because you sacrifice yourself. It's because they see a light in you that you don't see yourself yet. So focus on what is that shine? What is that magic? Magic. What is that purpose? You do that purpose and promotion will come. You don't have to carry it on your back. You don't have to sacrifice your well-being. Never no more again. And you can change jobs. You can change houses. You can change what? Listen, don't leave your family. Okay, don't do that. But <laughs> even if you tried, even if you tried, you just took you with you. You took you with you. When I was burnt out, I thought it was the job's fault. I thought it was my colleagues' fault. I blame some on my family. I love them, but I thought they were wearing me out. It was everybody else's fault. And in that five months, five months that I was out of work with no income, somebody hear me. When I was out of work with no income after working for 20 years, I learned that it wasn't any of that. This is who I was since as far as I could remember. I always had a problem saying no. I always took on too much. I was always looking for somebody else's validation. And in that time, I and even now, I'm learning what's in PBJ. I'm learning what he created me to do. I'm learning what he put on the inside of me. And the more familiar I become with that purpose, the more free I am. PBJ, sit back for a second, take a break. <laughs> While we pass this collection plate around, I'm gonna pull it back out from the other episode. The collection plate is still here. I'm gonna flash a cash app in just a second. Um, let me just tell. Wait a minute. Let me read this comment. So y'all are on the nose right now. I'm definitely going to be re-listening to this for a while. I'm definitely a people pleaser. Wow, you are stepping on all of my toes. Listen, y'all, she's stepping on mine too, and it's broke. PBJ don't care. She's speaking the truth up in here. That is what she's doing. Girl, I need to just breathe for a second. Just breathe for a second. Do you, a while ago, I had put up a post that says, stop, it says stop attaching or your worth, your value is not attached to your busyness. Come on. Your value is not attached to your busyness. You just said a whole mouthful, let it go. Let's, let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. PBJ, you don't understand how blown away I am right now because I'm telling you, I just recorded the episode before you and I got on. And one of the things that I said is I realized in this PBJ, girl, I'm afraid you have blown my mind. As I'm sitting here forced to slow down and rest that the world is still operating, PBJ. The world is still going. Things are still being accomplished. There are things that people can do that I don't have to participate in. You know, but sometimes we're trying to prove our worthiness and prove your value and stuff. And the value, like you said, even if I go somewhere, I'm taking me with me. My value is not in how many hours I put in. The, val the value is not in how much I grind. It is in my gift and how I use it and how I serve people with the gift. And as I'm sitting here with my foot elevated, with my broken toe, what I was realizing is there are a lot of things that I had said yes to that people really didn't need me for. I was saying yes to stuff that now that I can't do it, they functioning just fine. They didn't need me. What I needed, though, was to say no and, and to not have, you know, the explanation. That's the other thing. I was like, a lot of times we won't say no because we feel like we have to have a worthy explanation behind the no. No, I can't do it. It doesn't serve me at this time. And you don't even have to say that much. 
no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's that's the end of the discussion. When I say you have said a whole whole mouthful, and then let's go back to the people pleasing, because I think it's very important. In addition to recognizing that you are a people pleaser, you need to go back and find the cause for why you are a people pleaser. And we all probably have a story behind that. So I used to be a people pleaser for a very long time. Even though like, if you know, know me now, my personality and who I've allowed myself to grow to be, you'd be like, mm, you, was, you were a people pleaser. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I had to grow out of it. I um, felt, so my grandmother, I lived next to her and my aunt my whole life. My parents and I, we lived next to them. So basically I have two grandmothers. And one day when I got home, I didn't go over to see them like I normally do. I was tired. So I went home and laid on the couch and then my friend came over honking the horn because her parents had given her a new car. I was up in my feelings because I hadn't gotten a new car for my birthday. I was feeling all kinds of ways in the midst of all of this going on that I hadn't gone over there. My friend came over and I was feeling some type of way. My aunt came running over to the house to say some, something that happened with my grandmother. And I went over there and I watched my grandmother literally take her last breath on the floor of her bedroom. And for the longest time, I felt like I was the most horrible and most selfish person on the face of the earth. And it took me a long time to get through that, to be like, I was 16. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. teenagers are sometimes selfish. It's hard to think outside of yourself. But because of that loss to me, because she was like one of my best friends, and I felt like if I had just gone over there when I got off the bus, she was probably waiting for me because I all what when I got home from school because I always come over there. I didn't. And then the next time I saw her was her looking around the room like somebody helped me and watching her take that last breath was like traumatizing. Yeah. And for the longest time, there were a lot of things that happened on that day that I couldn't even do anymore. Like when I fell asleep on the couch. I literally stopped taking naps on Fridays because it happened on a Friday. The Oprah Winfrey show was on. I stopped watching Oprah. And I know that sounds like insignificant to somebody, but I was like, I, I, I couldn't even look at the show. It started snowing that day. I used to hate when it snowed. Like there were so many things. And so then what happened as a result of that is every time anybody in my family asked me to do anything, I said yes without hesitation because I was trying to one, I felt like I needed to like, make up for that because I had been so selfish. And then I felt like, but what if you don't say yes to them? And then something happens. And so I was running myself ragged saying yes to everything that everybody asked me to do because I felt like being a good person was tied to saying yes. And I felt like when that situation happened to my grandmother, that I wasn't a good person. And so to me, being a good person was say yes to all the things for all the people, you know, and then I had to really, go through and unpack that thing but once I realized why I was staying yes then that's when the real work starts so once you get to that point what would you say is the is the first step was what's the first step to like really starting to create this man so I've identified who I am I know that this is triggering me I know that I need to create the boundary what's my first move mm -hmm. So what I would say is look for opportunities to build the boundary, right? So we talked about your values. We talked about your motivation. Think about where you get your energy from. Start filling your cup. Start with you. Start with you. If it's a Bible study, if it's a prayer group, if it's therapy, if it's whatever, you cannot give from an empty cup. You can't give from an empty cup. After you identify what that trauma, because that's trauma. And often we think trauma has to be physical abuse, mm -hmm. that somebody has to physically hurt our bodies, but we are carrying so much soul trauma mm -hmm. that we have never identified. We, it's just in our backpack and it's heavy. How you doing? I'm just tired. Mm -hmm. You you doing all right? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm just tired. You're not saying you need a nap. How often do we hear that? You're not saying you need a nap. You're saying you're carrying too much. So identify the trauma and then you got to deal with it. Y'all, you can't deal with it if you're not willing to look at it. Whew. 
You can't fix nothing that you're not willing to look at. So you got to be willing to look at it, look at it in prayer, look at it in therapy, look at it with a mentor, look at it with somebody that you can trust to identify how it affects you and determine how you're going to allow it to affect you as you move forward. So you're identifying that purpose. I know it's something in me. I got this trauma, but I got this purpose. Mm. And I'm not going to allow this trauma to overwhelm my purpose. I am going to die empty. I'm going to leave it all on the court. I'm going to do what I was called to do. So you're going to do your purpose. You got to choose your priorities though. You can have it all, but you can't have it all at the same time. You can have it all. But you cannot have it all at the same time. So what's your priority right now? If your priority is, sis, you're right. I got this trauma and I need to deal with it. Maybe you need to have a seat somewhere and deal with that trauma. It doesn't mean you're not going to be whatever's in you. It doesn't mean you're not going to do whatever's in you. But you have some wisdom to know that there's some things that you got to deal with. And it's amazing that you think you have such a long journey. But as you start to deal with it. Purpose just starts to flow. You think you got to do one thing before you can get to the next thing. But as you take the steps and as you start doing it, purpose just flows out of you. It just flows out of you. And then the last thing I'll say is there are sacrifices necessary. Every good thing costs you something. Every good thing costs you something. But here's the key. When you disrupt burnout, it's not stealing from you. You choose what you're going to give. Oh! And you you give it freely. This is my sacrifice. I give this sacrifice of time. I give this sacrifice of love. When we walk around and burn out, it literally feels like people are stripping it away from us. Everybody wants something from you. You literally feel like you're walking around and people are just taking pieces of you. After you walk through the steps of disrupting burnout, you get, no, I'm, I know I'm called to give here. I give it freely and I give it with joy because I know I'm planting a seed. Nobody's stealing from me. I'm planting a seed. Girl, that I, I would be hard pressed to say that there's that one person here does not understand that when you are operating in burnout, It absolutely feels like everybody is taking, 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 even when they're operating in separate entities, like the people that are asking for stuff aren't even connected to each other. You're like, my God, everybody needs me for everything. Come on. Lord, why is everybody pulling at me like this? That is exactly what it feels like. You take everything as like an attack on your on your energy. Lord, the kids, I, you know, I just got in the house. Can I get in the house and get settled for a second, please? You know, the husband's asking you for something. You, you, you couldn't look for that. You couldn't find that without asking me for that. You at school, you, you, you listen, I used to have a rule in the classroom. Three before me. Don't come and talk to me until you already asked three other people in this room. I had a very active classroom. Three before me. But it'd be like, did you ask your three before you came to me? It literally will feel like people are stripping you of everything you have. And when you get to that point, that's your tail, PBJ. That's That's your tail. T-E-L-L. When you feel like everybody coming to you is stripping you, you're on the the verge of burnout. Or you might already be there. Yeah. Yeah. (gasps) Let me say this, Meek. I got to say this. Um, For those who are right now listening to us and feeling like, that's me. Like... It's, I am overwhelmed. I am burnt out. You're talking to me, but this is too much, sis. Where do I start? Like, I'm too tired to start. Mm. I don't even know what to do. Like, I, I don't have time to think about me. I can't stop all the things. I promise you, if you're thinking it, I said it to myself. Here's what I will tell you. This is something that has been so sacred to me. I would encourage you to start by finding some rest. Find some rest. And and I know, just stay with me. Stay with me. Because when I was in that season of burnout and somebody would say rest, I would look at them real crazy and get real mad. Mm. Because I'm looking at them like, you don't know my life. You don't know what I'm responsible for. Hear me when I say, I know. And I'm telling you now that you need to learn how to rest 
It takes faith to rest. Rest is worship. It is understanding. It's not all on me. It's not. It's not all on me. I will do what you call me to do, but whether it fails or succeeds, it's not on me. It's not on me. It is giving up that right to carry the burden. It's giving up the burden. Three things about rest I learned. Daily rest, weekly rest, and then an extended rest. Selah. When you see the word Selah in the book of Psalms, S-E-L-A-H. Selah, it means to stop and think about that. It's a musical technical term in the book of Psalms. It means to stop and think about that. That's your daily rest. We've given up our think time. We can't even be creative. We can't be wise. We can't think of solution. The solution is in you, but you're too tired to pull it out. You need your think time. If it's three minutes, if it's five minutes, if you got a 10 minute drive, if you got a 15 minute drive, if you need to go to the restroom, whatever you got to do, close the door. Mm -hmm. They don't have to know. Get your Selah. Get you a Selah every day. Every day you need some think time. Some quiet time. Your Sabbath is your weekly. You need 24 hours. I can't give up 20. Yes, you can. It's not on you. You don't carry this world in your hands. You, didn't, you weren't there when he created the world and the sea and all the stuff. You, you weren't there. So you mean to tell me we're going to fall apart if you take 24 hours? Ooh. We got to stay in our place. We got to stay in our place and understand that it's still going to go. Just like me was saying, the whole world's still going and she got a broken toe. <laughs> I sat down for five months. I messed around and left. My students kept learning. My staff kept working. The school's still open. <laughs> Imagine that. The school is still open and PBJ is not there. You can stop. You can stop for 24 hours for rest and worship and play. Ooh. You can stop. Learn how to play. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Stop taking your life so seriously. Learn how to play. You need it in your life. You need to know how to stop. And then the extended rest, you need a sabbatical. Every now and then you need to physically get away from your environment. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. You don't have to go on these big trips if you can't afford to do that. But go somewhere away. Go somewhere away that you are physically separated from your every day so that you can replenish yourself. Learn how to rest. You said so many good things. That rest is clutch. It is clutch. And you and I were talking about it before we even went live. And that's what I was saying. I was like, I realized in these last few days as I've been unable to do the things that I would normally do that I've been doing a disservice to myself. And I thought I was doing pretty well with, you know, self-care, but no, I, I've been doing a disservice. I have not been resting like I thought I was. And I realized that because the way I feel now, I don't remember a time when I felt this rested. I really don't. I was like, my skin, y'all said it's popping. Yeah, popping, glowing, got the extra glow. I was like, I look younger under my eyes. I was like, what is happening here? But that's rest. That is what real rest looks like in taking the time. And PBJ, I want to say to somebody who is listening, who's like, I can't. I used to be you. I used to be you. You know, and it doesn't matter which walk of life you come from. You know, some of us are mothers. And so we're, we're running the household that way. Some of us are might not have children, but you have a lot of other people that you're taking care of. Your career is a big thing. You have the people who you're working with. Some of us have pets. And I know you might not think that's a big thing, but that is a big thing. And so you have like all of these things you're supposed to do and you're like, but I can't. I had to learn because I would use like all the different things going on in my house that I needed to do as to why I couldn't rest. Same thing that you said, though. I had to tell myself one day when I was feeling tired because I used to want to get mad. Let's hit back to what you said. I wanted to get mad at other people. So I wanted to get mad at Carlos when things needed to be done around the house because I was doing them, but he wasn't. But see, the difference is not in a negative way because Carlos is a great husband. He gets things done. But also Carlos knows how to rest. And what I realized is all these things that I was doing around the house, Carlos never asked me to do those things. Mm 
So no, I wasn't cooking, but also I put the the thing on my back. I need to wash the clothes and I need to sweep and mop the floor and I need to be the one that's cleaning up the bathrooms, you know, and I was putting that stuff on my back. And then I would get mad if I felt like he wasn't doing that part. But the thing that I realized is like, he never asked me to put those on my list. I yeah. put them on the list and then got mad because I was doing what I put on my list. <laughs> I put it on the list. <laughs> so when I learned to fall back and I stopped doing certain things, guess what? He never even said like, oh, you're not. He was like, listen, you are in a great mood. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, the household felt lighter <laughs> yeah. when I'm not taking on all the things. Same for my kids now. I had to learn to let, again, certain things go. Now, let me give my disclaimer again, because I do have friends who do things I don't do, but they do it because they want to do it. That's mm -hmm. a whole different thing. So like I have one of my friends where she is the person who is she loves to cook and she does love to make the play for her husband and put it on there. I'm not knocking that. So I'm not saying like you're being subservient and whatever, but it's something that brings her joy. Now Lose, if you listen, I'm not saying I cannot fix your play. I'm just saying like I just don't like the expectation. That's what I say. But I'm saying there's nothing wrong with wanting to serve your husband in that way. Whatever works for your marriage and how you serve them, that is fine. If doing certain things around the house brings you joy and you enjoy that, that is fine. So I'm not knocking you. I'm just talking about what brings me peace, what brings me joy, which helps me to set my boundaries. I will wash the clothes for myself and the twins because they're eight. That 15 year old and my husband, they know where the machine is. They know how to use it. Now, guess what else? I'm going to wash and dry my clothes in the twins' clothes. But guess who putting the twins' clothes up? The twins. I, put, I throw that stuff in the basket. I don't care what they do with it. You have drawers, underclothes, shirts, pants. Put them in accordingly. And then if you don't put them up where they're supposed to be and it's time to find them, then that's on you. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to have that stress of, Lord, I'm so tired, but let me come in here and get these clothes together and let me get everybody's clothes put up. And, and they sitting back playing PlayStation. Right. I created that boundary for myself. Now, again, if washing, folding the clothes, if that's something that you enjoy doing, by all means, serve your family that way. But what I'm saying is don't put extra things on your plate that you know add stress or anxiety to you for the sake of letting that be part of your value. Yes. My household still runs with the twins putting their clothes up wherever they may. <laughs> you got on mismatched socks. If you like it, I love it. That is fine. <laughs> and once I learn to let go of those things, I'm telling you, sis, my house, it's not perfect, but it is peaceful. Mm. And I believe that's because they feed off of my peace. You know what I mean? They see me making time for myself. And I'm not perfect. I was telling you that before that. I still have some room to declutter and do some things. But there is a piece that I have that then gets transferred onto my family. You know, nobody's coming in trying to figure out what type of mood mama's in. You know what I'm talking about? Nobody's yeah. coming in trying to, trying to tiptoe and fill me out and see how I'm operating today. Mm -hmm. We come in. It's all love and joy. Where everybody at? Yeah, that's what we do when we come in the house. We say, yep, yep, yep. You hear a series of yerps go through my house. It's not where mom is. She good? She tired? You know what I mean? Because there was a time where I was really tired and I would be irritable. Who's supposed to clean these dishes? And who's supposed to do this? Who's supposed to do that? I had to let that go. Mm -hmm. And so for anybody who's like, I can't, pick one thing. Pick one thing that you can let go. We don't have to let all of it go. But that thing that brings you that stress, that anxiety that is causing you to be on edge with people around you, that is keeping you up at night, that you feel like you can't even get a good sleep when it is time to rest. Pick one thing That's and good. work on fighting through that one thing until you get comfortable. Because I'm telling you, when you see that the world is still operating and that the family is still functioning, it's going to give you a different outlook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, before we go, the one last thing I want to touch on. Uh, you recently posted about self-care, but you talked about soul care. Mm -hmm. and so I feel like that's like next level with this self-care. What's soul care and what do we need to be doing for this soul care? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting that self-care is in right now. 
it's hot. A lot of people are talking about it, but my concern is we're talking about naps and facials and walks, which is fine. All of that's great. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but it is not a total remedy. Mm. We are more than just a body. We have a body, we are a spirit, and we have a soul. That soul, your mind, the seat of your emotions, all your thinking. In order to dig deep, we have to do soul care. So that soul care is exactly what we were talking about. What's in that backpack? What are those experiences that have defined how you live and how you operate in this world? And what what of those experiences serve you well? And what of those experiences no longer serve you? Mm. That's that soul care. So what are you what are you listening to? What conversations are you having? Who are you surrounding yourself with to support you through this journey of spring cleaning that backpack um, so that you can carry forward the things that serve you well and then help you serve others? We got to dig deep for the soul care. Listen. I hope y'all heard what she said. It even comes down to what you're listening to. Being mindful of what you are feeding yourself, who you are surrounding yourself with. I, I the We were talking about a book I'm reading. I listen on Audible, but all my books are about purpose, yes. passion, faith. Like those are the books I listen to because that's what I need to be feeding myself. If I'm talking about walking in purpose and wanting to do it the right way, I like hearing other people's testimonies. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love hearing things like that and people who are going to encourage you. I'm mindful about who I surround myself with. You know, I have some um, good people in my circle, but our P2P alumni group, Purpose of Platform, that's why I know any dream, any thought, any idea I have, I can post it there. And it's going to be in a safe space because everybody's going to be like, yes, do it, don't. Or they're going to give true advice as to maybe you should do it like this or maybe this is something else you can do. And I know it's coming from a genuine place, but that soul care is an absolute necessity. Yes. Absolute necessity. Well, listen, y'all, PBJ, I know people going to be listening. They're going to be like, but I do not need to just end my relationship with PBJ right here. <laughs> I need more of her. So we got a couple ways that people can get connected with you, PBJ. So first and foremost, let's let's hit it up. Um, if you want to follow her on Instagram, we have at Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson. I have it up on here on the screen, but also I'll put it in the show notes. But Buckner, B-U-C-K-N-E-R, Patrice, Dr. D-R, Patrice Buckner Jackson. So they can find you there. Same thing for your website, www.patricebucknerjackson.com. And then, y'all, y'all, this I say the best. For, no, this one of the best for last. Patrice has a whole podcast, y'all, called Hard Work with PBJ. And when I tell you she drops the gems, she drops the gems. Also, let's go ahead and celebrate ourselves real quick. There's something where you can, where podcasts are ranked. It's called Listen Notes. Y'all can go look it up for yourself. Um, sis, we're doing some things out here in the community. We're making impacts. We're making impact. Yes, and so this podcast, Heart Work with PBJ, is ranked in the top 5% of podcasts globally. <laughs> and I just want to say that I joined her for some company. We top 5% ranked globally for these podcasts, sis. Let's go. I am so proud of you. Listen, let me tell y'all about sisterhood. I didn't even know about listen notes. I had no idea. But my sister Meek, she looked that thing up for me and she announced that to me to let me know. And when you need confirmation, oh, it is just around the corner because my sister came just in time to say, hey, sis, do you realize? Do you know what's going on? So thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. You are welcome. I, I am happy to share that because, you know, I tell you when you win, I win. When I win, you win. Like we win together up oh, yeah. in here. But also, look, before we go out, I want them to know all the ways to get in touch with you. So just like we have the looking for my fit community. You have a heart work community. How can they I join do. that community? 
Absolutely. Just find us on Facebook. It's Heart Work Community. Um, and you can just join for free. And that's where we talk about how to do this heart work. So serve from the heart um, while we're disrupting burnout, while we're living the lives we desire and doing the work that we're called to do. So it is full of professionals and ministers and counselors and people who love other people and serve other people, but know that it costs them something. So y'all need to come on over and we'll continue the conversation. Yes, go on over there, y'all. It does not have to be over. You can go over there and still have access. But look, one more thing. You have a hard work academy. <laughs> we got things going on. Listen, PBJ's out here changing lives. We're changing, changing the world out here. But you have a wait list for that now. So they can't get in that right now, but they can join the wait list. So if they go here to patricebucknerjackson.com, then they can get on the wait list for that. But in the meantime, join her community on Facebook, y'all, the Heart Work community. Um, check her out on Instagram at Dr. Patrice Buckner Jackson. And also listen to the podcast Heart Work with uh, PBJ. I, sis, thank you so much for coming on here today. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you back. And seriously, even after us talking, you know, when we had a little talk before, there are boundaries to be set. And so I hope that something has resonated with you and that if you were in that place of feeling like you just can't create the boundary, yes, you can. And if you feel like you need the support, y'all go on over to her community, join the community, you know, because it's all about, um, you know what I love about us? It's not like, well, I have to look for my fit community. You have this community. I want No, y'all go over there and join her community. Go over there and join the community. It's, it's all about if you're really stepping in purpose, if you're really walking in purpose, and if you really have faith, then you know whatever is for you is for you. Come on. There is no competition. There is no comparison. So there's no thief of joy here because we don't have anything to compare. If I have the purpose to impact, then I want you all to have access to whatever it is that you need to go forth and be great. And if that means that, you know, you need to join other multiple communities, I want you to do that. So, like, I'm not introducing people. People and then like sitting up here with an ego like well no, no go join the hard work community y'all <laughs> go join it and get the support and like right before we go out I just want to leave said this was so good what a great way to end this long day going to sleep with peace and understanding thank you that's Amen. beautiful that's beautiful and somebody else said thank you so much you all you all are welcome and we know you can create these boundaries. And again, the conversation doesn't have to end. Come on over. Patrice, I, I'm sitting here thinking, am I in the community? I'm going to be in the community. I'm coming over to the community. So y'all come on over to the heart work community with me and we can continue the conversation. But um, if you know somebody else who is going through the same exact thing, don't just keep this to yourself. You listen to this podcast, send it to somebody else who you think needs it. Tell them about um, Patrice. Tell them about her community. Tell them about, you know, anything that you've heard today. Share that because sometimes you just never know what somebody's going through and they need to hear that word. So if it resonates with you, then be sure to share with somebody else who it might resonate with too. But sis, again, thank you so much. It was my honor. Thank you for having me, sis. You're welcome. And y'all, thank you. Um, for tuning in thank you for taking in all the gems and be sure to go check out um patrice on instagram and be sure to check out her podcast heart work with pbj i have had a phenomenal time and i cannot wait to see you all next week so until then bye y'all dr pbj is absolutely amazing and she has some more gems to drop for you in her ebook that is called the myth of balanced time and so if you would love to get your hands on that all you have to do is click the link in the show notes to fill out the form and give feedback about this episode and voila it is yours as always thanks for tuning in be sure to subscribe rate and review and we will catch you on the next episode bye guys